Welcome back. With us now are two House Financial Services Committee members who will be lined up to get answers from Fed Chairman Ben Bernanke this morning. We first start with Congressman Bachman, is a Republican from Minnesota, and Congressman Cleaver is a Democrat from Missouri. Welcome to the two of you. Thanks so much for joining us. I know you have a busy day ahead. Thanks. We're happy to be here. All right. Let me start with you, Congressman Bachman. Uh, you know, you saw the heated debate going on yesterday in the Senate hearings, a lot of finger pointing, a lot of anger going on uh, on the Hill. What do you want to ask today of the Fed chairman? What are you looking for? I'm grateful, first of all, that the Fed chairman will be there today. This is an enormous issue that Congress needs to wrap its arms around. And I have a question about the absurdity of the situation. On one hand, we're in the bill that we're looking at, we're looking at perhaps a potential of a public housing trust fund of $500 million a year that would be taken away from Freddie and Fannie, while at the same time the taxpayers are being asked to be on the hook for potentially trillions of dollars of backing. This is, this is concerning, especially when we're looking at increasing the size of the loan limits that Freddie and Fannie would be able to make. There's an absurdity that's going on here, and I want to know from the Fed chair, how does this all work together? Congressman Cleaver, let me turn to you and, and get your reaction to this, because this is one of those rare instances where Democrats right now are, in essence, to some degree, siding with the president on backing Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Where do you stand on that, and is that a resolution that we can actually get passed in the House and Senate? Yes, I think it uh, will be passed in the House. The Senate is going to pretty much accept uh, whatever we send over. Uh, but I, I think that uh, I used to say that we had a transportation-based economy. Uh, I'm now amending uh, what I used to say uh, to now say that we have a confidence-based economy. Uh, and I think uh, it's clear when you look at what happened to Bear Stearns and what uh, is happening to uh, the, the GSEs, uh, it is fear. Uh, that is creating the problem. The sky is not falling, fear is rising, and I think the, uh, the Fed chairman needs to be, uh, be able to tell us something uh, that can cause the American public to have a higher level of confidence. To you. Congressman Bachman, a number of your GOB colleagues, including House Minority Leader Representative John Boehner, voiced strong opposition to what the president is suggesting in terms of backing this. Uh, what do you think is the resolution or the, pro or the solution to a problem that, frankly, we know has existed for Alexis, decades? I think, Alexis, I think what we need to do now is take a deep breath and get all of the information on the table. After all, what we're talking about is potentially exposing the American taxpayer to an additional five trillion dollars worth of risk. This isn't a small issue. Remember, the Senate just took this bill up yesterday morning. We will meet in the House with Chairman Bernanke today, which I'm extremely grateful he'll be there. But this is, this is not a small thing. This is a big issue. If we ask the American taxpayer to additionally expose themselves to $5 trillion worth of risk, I think this warrants a little bit of hearing and vetting before we put the taxpayer on the hook for that kind of money. You know, Congressman Cleaver, we were just talking to some economists from across the country uh, or professors at different universities. One of them said, to, to Congressman Bachman's point, listen, we're talking about $5 trillion in an underpinning of, of mortgage assets, but we're not being told from either Paulson or Bernanke how big the losses on those portfolios are to date. Do we need more transparency before the American public can support a move in Congress? Well, there's no question. We always need uh, the highest level of transparency. But, uh, look, we... we uh We've got to create an, an atmosphere in this country where people have some confidence uh, in the uh, financial management uh, of F Freddie and Fannie uh, and also the ability of the United States Congress to stand behind them. There's an implicit agreement, has been for quite a while now, about 40 years, that the government is the backstop. And uh, we, we need to declare that again. Uh, Fannie and Freddie uh, uh, are, are really going to get about two and a quarter a billion dollars uh, in, in a, a line of credit. A line, right. Uh, and, and that's, uh, I, I think, going to say to many of the uh, consumers around the country 
and, and, and lending institutions, that, that, that it is, uh, they are solvent uh, institutions. You, and and it, you know, it is the level of confidence. Well, he, here's my concern about this. You know, Congressman Bachman, let, let, Bachman let, me, let me ask you about this. I mean, my concern is there was all the talk about whether or not the Fed bear, bailed out Bear Stearns. They say, you know, wasn't a bailout. Then they say Fannie and Freddie isn't a bailout scenario. But there was this perception in the marketplace that if another bank were to fail uh, or a broker-dealer, that there would be support because the last time around it caused a major catastrophe. There's a growing feeling that if there is another problem, the government may not be able to handle it because we're, we're printing money to stay afloat here. What, how do you respond to that? Alex, I think that you're putting your finger exactly on the nerve of what the problem is because you're right. It's an interesting confluence of timing on events. When you look at Bear Stearns and the federal government and the, really the taxpayers being the backstop to a private investment firm, then you look at IndyMac and the FDIC having to come in with IndyMac and potentially other banks that may fail in the coming months. Now you're looking, for instance, at Freddie and Fannie. Where does this all end? And one thing that Congressman Cleaver had mentioned is that there's been an implicit assurance that the American taxpayer would be the backstop for Freddie and Fannie. That's part of the problem. Everyone thinks that's okay. The federal taxpayer will be the chump who at the end of the day will pay the bill. And the American taxpayer is saying, look, I'm having a tough enough time with my own mortgage, buddy. I'm having enough problems with paying $4 a gallon for my gas tank. Why do I have to pay for borrowers who are irresponsible and banks who lended when they shouldn't have been lending? So I think it's important to always take into account the forgotten man. And the forgotten man in this situation is the American taxpayer who is not a part of these contracts, right. but who's being brought in to be the backstop. That's unfair, and I don't think any of us believe that the forgotten man, at the end of the day, should right. have to pay the bill for other people's mistakes. All right. I apologize, Congressman Cleaver. I know you're waiting to rebut that. I apologize, but unfortunately we have to go. I want to thank the two of you so much for joining me this morning, sure. and uh, best of luck Alexa, on today's hearing. You. I appreciate it. Up next, Wall Street.